Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Lahang Domingo Kanatong Tanan. There are three interesting sections of today's Gospel reading that need to be in, uh, explained or understood since they are presented in a rather figurative manner. And let me begin with the middle part of it, which is about the baptism that Jesus is talking about. This is none other than his passion and death. And this baptism, this baptism that he's going to, to fulfill, which actually puts anguish in his heart until it is accomplished, is none other than the heart of the, the mystery of salvation. Second, the last part of it, which is actually about division. Now, division here has something to do, normally understood as anything that makes the family not united. But it is a rather, you know, conclusive or arbitrary conclusion if we take a look into how the family is divided, especially since nowadays we have many practical, practically experiences and we hear a lot of it. If not, we ourselves are experiencing the so-called division among us. But the list may go on and on. But why is the gospel only focused on father against son, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and vice versa? Why, why didn't the gospel say husband against wife or parents against children? No, but usually that's already understood in the father, son, daughter, mother. There is an interesting thing to this, unwritten though it is, but it has to be understood because if the Lord said that against husband and wife, then what we are talking about, marriage, takes no effect because it would be tantamount to an argument that will be used that, well, divorce is allowed, no? even if we have so many steps uh, that we are practically going to observe. Now, why, why is this basically father, son, mother, daughter, mother-in-law, and daughter-in-law? I remember a very interesting commentary on this when I was still a student that why is the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law included here? Because there is a usual, a natural tendency for the mother to be always with the son. Okay? And once the son gets married, the mother gets a rival in the daughter-in-law. Okay? So take it or leave it, but sometimes it happens, but not all the times. No, ang kanunay yung mag-away usahay ang, ang, sana, ang ugang ang babae o yung binalay. Okay? Usually that's, that's, the, that's part of the understanding. But it can be another, in another way. Now why father, son, daughter, and mother? Precisely because the division that Jesus is talking about here has something to do with the decision to follow the Lord. Once a person wants to follow the Lord, even the parents have nothing to say on it. Because the command of the Lord remains and will always be, love the Lord your God above all things. But it doesn't mean that you have to 
not love the parents, but putting the parents' second priority because to follow the Lord is always first priority. And this is always understood in the context of sons going to the priesthood or daughters going to the, to the sisterhood. No? But it would be very, very interesting to, to make a quarrel between the, mother, the father and the son if the son wants to become a sister. No? That would be a different story after all. Okay? But this has something to do with following the Lord. And this is the division. It is called a creative division. Because not all the time this may happen, but there are families who have taken over the Lord for themselves. Let me give us a few examples. The family of St. Benedict, whose twin sister was Scholastica, they are saints. But their parents also were saints. And then in recent memory, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, or St. Therese of Lisieux. Now recently, her father and mother were also proclaimed as saints. So it is practically there as a model that the family can be together to follow the Lord and even become saints because that is what we are called to be. But then we have to take into account certain parental choices for their children. And if ever the priesthood or the, the sisterhood is chosen, okay, some parents would always have some problems in the process. But there is always a way to dissolve it. For, for after all, it is the Lord we follow. Finally, the fire that is the image in today's gospel reading as it opens is not necessarily the fire that we understand to be the, like that of Sodom and Gomorrah or a punishment of sorts. But fire there is actually purification. In fact, the fire that is already ablaze or blazing is a challenge for those who have the gift that they receive from the Spirit, the things that we have to do, the goodness that is innate in us that we have to manifest, that it had to be keep on, it had to be burning. It had to be always a flame so that anything will always come into the perspective of, or into the, the plan of God. Whenever a person has zeal, no, kunaikadasig, kunaikasibot. That has that is the fire. Sometimes it is called the fire in the belly. But what I like in Cebuano here is that this fire is necessary to cook the uncook. No, aron maluto ang mga hilaw. No, naiuban nga musulay-sulay lang pero dili mo padayon. No, kinahanglan pa ng lutoon pero dili sad pagoron. No, kay sa Tagalog raba ang pagod is kapoy. Sa Cebuano, mas advanced. Kay pagod na gani ka, di naging ka mapuslan. No? Kagub ko, hinoon. But that is the thing that we're trying to talk about. And these are the challenges we have to respond to as Christians called to follow the Lord, to do what He wants us by even going through fire. Because whatever we do is always for the ablazement of the world because this ablazing is none other than God's love in our hearts. Amen.